Hey guys, what do you say after that? I mean, <laughs> you know? Everything you said is true. <laughs> what, what do you even say? How do you react? It's hard, but um, thank you guys. It's an honor for me to be here with everybody. Um, we are on chapter 6 of the book of Revelation. And But before <laughs> we get into it, I just want to, because I know that David is just starting out with us here. We came off of chapter 5 of a, a situation that was happening uh, in John's vision. Actually, um, Jesus' vision that he was giving through John, that he was manifesting through John, it was Christ's vision that he was showing John. Jesus called him, let me show you this, right? <clears throat> so, um, when he's over there in this heavenly place where God, the Father, he had a scroll in his hand for somebody to <laughs> open it. And nobody could open it. So as we heard already, and for you know, for you, if you haven't, you know, um, listened to the the first five chapters of, of this teaching, you can just go on YouTube. They have it at, at the Holy Move Church um, channel over there. You can watch the the series on on the, the end of times. And but just to to sum this up. <clears throat> Let me just get back on track. So, nobody could open this scroll. This powerful angel, he cried out <clears throat> to see if anyone could open this scroll. Through heaven, through earth, heaven and below earth. And nobody could open this scroll. And John, he just, yeah, you can. Uh... I guess um, nobody was worthy, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. Nobody was worthy to open, to open it. John was just in awe. He was, he got sad. He got, he, he got desperate because he started to cry because who could open this scroll and break the seven seals? Because uh, I don't know if you understand a seal. Like if you go back to like medieval times, a king, he would have a seal. He would have his own personal family seal stamp that he would melt the, the, yeah, the candles, yeah. get his, his usually on the ring, yeah. and just seal up the letter. It, it's a, a letter of authority. Only <coughs> a specific person can open that, right? So John is over there just crying when a... One of the, the the ancients, they go to him and just tell him, wait for the the lion of Judah, because he is worthy. And when he looks, he sees a lamb, right? And the lamb was bloody, like it just had been killed, slaughtered. And that lamb was worthy, which was Jesus, to open the seals. All right. So, what? Well, we're picking up we're picking up from here and after you know the lamb which is Jesus he presented himself you know just heaven just got into praise and worship and started worshiping him um, all the heavenly beings started worshiping him amen all right so um, amen I want to start off with you guys because now here in chapter six it's when things start to happen not only in a in a spiritual realm in the heavenly realm but it's going to manifest here on earth all right and that's when like things get real <laughs> you know um but at, just right now like before we were starting over here I, the lord was speaking into my heart on this and that's how I'm gonna we're going to speak about this but there's something that God asked me to do more at the end 
But I just want to start us off in the book of Isaiah. If you can open your Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 through 10. Chapter 46, book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verses 9 through 10. May you read it? Yes, please. Uh, remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning from ancient times, what is still to come, I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Amen. Can we get just one more person reading this, just so we can try to grasp this and, and just have this like same, same in your head? Yeah, it, it can be the same, the same translation. Just so you can hold it dear to your heart. I'm, I'm just going to wait just one second so you guys can find it. I, I really want you guys just to. It's all right. Isaiah 36, 9 and 10. 46. 46. Yep. 46, 9 and 10. Brother Paul. Remember the former things of old. For I am God and there is none else. I am God. There is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times things that are not yet done. Saying. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east. That's it. Thank you. That, oh, that's 11. Okay. Yeah. Thank right. you. <laughs> Here on the, on the verse 10, God says that he makes known, he announces the end right at the beginning. What we're going to get in about, what we're going to get into now is on the seven seals that kept this this scroll that were in this scroll all right so imagine a scroll it had seven seals okay so you got to understand that the book of revelation is a it's a, a prophetic book it get it gets into prophetic literature it's different from normal type of scripture i know well we heard all pastor renan uh, speaking on this, uh, the way the book was written was, it, it was like the person who was writing it was trying to explain some really Hebrew Jewish things in Greek. It's like me trying to say a word in Portuguese that doesn't exist in English. I don't know if I can think of a word that you can't like literally translate it to English so you can explain it but it's kind of hard to translate right so because of how the Greek is used kind of a messy Greek because it's trying to show Jewish Hebrew things symbolism the you know Hebrew symbolism you're gonna see the the several the seven candlesticks seven trumpets what are the trumpets is that is it a regular old trumpet oh I, I left it at Fort Myers I had it here I had one of the trumpets the, the shofar I don't know if you've ever seen one. It's the, the uh, ram's, horn, like ram's horn. It's the trumpet that the, the Jews use, which is the trumpet that is that the Bible speaks of when we when the trumpet, you know, uh, when you, we hear the trumpet, it's the shofar. So it's it's Jewish symbolism. It's Hebrew symbolism. All right, guys. So for us, in order for us to understand this, we gotta look back a little because all of what is written in the book of Revelation the Bible builds up to it as a prophetic book just like if you would read prophet Daniel prophet Isaiah um, you see that every prophetic book that has prophetic visions visions God usually gives visions in a progressive order visions are usually progressive Especially these type of visions. So God is showing little by little. That's why the book of, of Revelation, um, most scholars, and I'm talking about literally most scholars, they don't, they accept that the book of Revelation isn't in chronological order. Okay? 
but it's it comes in cycles. It's it explains a situation from beginning, middle, end, and then it re-explains it. It gives more depth to what's going on. Okay, so that is the that's a prophetic language. The same type of writings that you would find in prophetic books in the Old Testament. All right, guys. So here in in the book of Isaiah, it says. On, we read the verse 9 and 10. I just want to point out on verse 10 that it says, God is saying, I make known the end from the beginning. beginning. Mm -hmm. God's saying that he, is, he shows us the end right at the beginning. He announces to us the end at the beginning. And that's why it's important when, when, what we're going to get into. Um, we're probably going to be able to speak about the first four seals tonight, hopefully. Um, but when this walk that we're going to have here into the book of Revelation, we got to compare it to what God revealed in the beginning. All right, guys. I wasn't, I was thinking about if I should do this or not. Pastor Renan, yep. can you ask Pastor Sarah for that little whiteboard and the thing? I just want to show them something really quick. The whiteboard? Yeah. She knows. Because I just want to show you guys how everything God already had spoken about in the Old Testament. All of these visions that John has are just, it gives more depth to what God already had spoken since the beginning of times. Amen, guys? Amen. So, I just want to show you guys real quick something about that. Amen. But let's speaking about um, this prophetic type of writing, vision. Uh, it's a prophetic <laughs> vision that John has. I want you guys to turn to the book of Exodus. It's the second book of the Bible. Exodus chapter 25, verse 9. This is for you to understand. Yeah, chapter 25, verse 9. This is just for you to understand that the book of Revelation speaks on things that God already had showed mankind. All right? Amen? If anybody found them, you can read it, please. According to all that I show you, that is the pattern of Turbanas, Turbanasal, and the pattern Turbanacle, and the pattern of the skirmishes, just so you shall make it. Can anybody else also read it, please? Just the verse 9. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. Yeah. You see what God is telling Moses? <laughs> Here, when, when God is, is showing Moses how to build the tabernacle, you are going to see this very same tabernacle, but the, the complete version of it in the book of Revelation. Okay? Because um, John, he will see God's tabernacle coming down. He's going to see it. But this is something that God told Moses. Moses, you are going to build this exactly how I'm going to show you. So... Moses, he also had the vision that John had of the tabernacle, okay? Thank you, Pastor Renan. I just want to show you guys something real quick. Thank you. So God, he told Moses to do things the way that he showed him. So we're talking about spiritual things. Moses saw spiritual things and built upon those spiritual things that God showed him. All right? So you're going to see that um, if you turn still on the book of Exodus, chapter 37, verse 17, you're going to see that the pattern was revealed long ago. You see that God is, set, is telling Moses, Moses, you're going to do as the pattern I'm going to show you. So Moses starts building utensils for the tabernacle that are the same exact utensils that are used in John's vision in the book of Revelation. 
Why I'm giving an emphasis to this is because we're getting into that specifically. Seven seals, seven trumpets, each of them have a symbolism. We already spoke about the, the seven candlelights, right? The candlesticks, which is the, the menorah in, in, in Hebrew, which is that, that big candlestick with like, I got a board, I got a board right here. All right? Yeah. This is something very Jewish, right? Yes. Yeah. But that is what is in the vision. Okay? So you're going to see the churches, each of the church, Ephesus, Ismirna, Pergamos, Theatira. So all the, the seven churches are here. And then you're going to see Christ, the Lamb, in the middle of the churches. And these are also, these seven churches also speak about the seven spirits of God. And all of that, God already had spoken in the Old Testament. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. So I'm going, so you guys don't be lost. And why, why is this like this? Why um, is it showing it this way? It's because God is just, just showing the, the, showing depth into something that he, he already had told his prophets long ago. And everybody knows the biggest prophet Israel has ever had was Moses. Was Moses. Amen? Amen? So you see that, um, it, did anybody open chapter 37, verse 17? Yes. Can you read it, please? They made the lampstand of pure gold. They hammered out its base and shaft. And made it flower like cups, buds and blossoms of one piece with them. So you see the seven golden lampstands or, or candle, what did I call it before? The the candlelights, right? The the lampstand. So Moses built according to the revelation. So Moses had that revelation. The same revelation that we're gonna see John having, but John is getting the, the yeah, the menorah. Yeah. Yeah. John John is having the 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 full package <laughs> over there, you know, in, in, in the Isle of, of Patmos where he was exiled, where he had this vision. Guys, God shows us. I just, that's, I just, I really want to show you guys this just so you guys can, can see how God, it, he shows us the end right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right? I want to show you that just in... The beginning, when we think about the beginning, we think about Genesis, yeah, Adam, and Eve. Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. I'm not going to get into the whole verse, but I just want to show you um, the the first verse of the book of Genesis, right? In the beginning, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, mm -hmm. right? In Hebrew, it says, Bereshit bara Elohim ve et hashamayim ve haaretz. So I just want to write you guys this word, which means the beginning, which is Bereshit. And that's in Hebrew? That's in Hebrew. I'm writing it in. I'm like, that's all familiar, but... <laughs> that's in Hebrew. That was the name of the day. <laughs> all right. Hebrew, we read it from um, oh, right to left, left, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. He, guys, imagine this. Look how amazing this is. Let me ask you something. Did God speak to Moses? Yeah. Yes, right? Yeah. Don't worry. I don't ask hard questions. I, don't, I ask obvious questions. So don't. You, you don't have, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not out to get you guys. Right? I'm gonna ask <laughs> obvious questions. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll give you that away. So did God speak to Noah? Yeah. Yeah. Did God speak to Adam? And when God spoke to them, God spoke in Hebrew. It's crazy, right? So this language, it, it's a very prophetic language. Hebrew was first spoken before it was written. It was first spoken. When they started writing it, they wrote it through symbols to, to make you understand what, you know, um, what it's talking about. So it was a, First, the, the first alphabet of it was symbolic. So, for example, the word, um, right upside down, 
the word father, which is Av, okay, the word father, the symbol of this, the, this, this letter, the letter Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, is an ox head, okay? Like you see the face and the little horns, it's, it's the old way they used to draw it. Like, you know, cavemen, they used to draw on walls, mm -hmm. that sort of thing, you know? And the word bait, the, the letter bait was the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It means, it, it, the, the symbol for it, this is supposed to be a house. That's how they drew it, okay? This word, this letter, this, this symbol, the symbol of the letter Aleph, means it's the letter of God, so it usually speaks about God, but it also means strength, okay? And this letter, the symbol of this letter, the letter bet, or bet, I'll, I'll try to say it in, in the more English form, the letter bet, it's a house. So back then when they drew an ox with a house, what they were saying is that the strength of the house so in Hebrew, the father is the strength of the house, is who supports the house. So it's like man of the house, kind of in English? It's not like man of the house, but it's, it's like he who supports the house, the father. <clears throat> the father. Mm -hmm. okay. You understand? Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. when they saw this, the symbols, they would understand what it was talking about. So. Here in Bereshit, just to show you guys how God, he, he gave spoilers all throughout. Like, <laughs> spoilers. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, he gave spoilers like all throughout. Because here, I just want to show you this. Just like in Isaiah said, that he's, he shows the end in the beginning. The letter bait, you remember what the symbol is, guys? What'd you say? A house. Right? <laughs> the letter Rish, it is a face. But that's how they drew it, okay? Don't. Yeah. Okay. Looks like an arrow. All right? You did not judge your own specimen. Thank you. <laughs> the letter Aleph, you guys remember? <coughs> Ox head. Yeah. The, letter, the letter Shin is teeth. The letter Yud is a hand. In the letter Tav, which is the last letter of the alphabet, is a cross. All right. You guys, when this, this, these first two letters, they form a word, which is the word Bar. Do you guys remember what Bar means in Hebrew or Aramaic? You remember um, um, Simon? He was called Simon Bar Jonas. What, Simon so, Peter? Why was he called Simon Bar Jonas? Nice son of Jonas. So Bar means? <coughs> son. All right? Guys, the letter bait stands for house. The letter Rish, it's a head, but the, the head, the symbol of the head symbolizes the most important person. It is so beautiful, this, because in Hebrew, when like when God is, is giving them this language, God is showing them that the most important person in the house mm -hmm. is the son. Mm -hmm. When your baby was born, you don't live for yourself anymore. You live for her. Mm -hmm. A father and a mother, they give their lives for their sons and daughters. Because the most important person in the house just became that baby. <coughs> Everything you do is to give that baby life. All right, okay? <coughs> Bar means child. So, let's put son. Sorry guys, trying to right and left to right and right to left is complicated. Son, okay? So this is bet. The letter Aleph stands for what, guys? Remember? Ox head. Ox head, but it, it's the letter of God. Right? It also means strength, but it's a letter of God. It stands for God because it's the first letter. So, God. So, son of God. 
Calm down. Don't, don't get the spoiler yet. <laughs> let's let's Witch, man. let's <laughs> walk through. Let, I want to show them. Let's walk through the letter Sheen. It's teeth. The the symbol is teeth, but it means to consume and to destroy. As teeth, what what do you do with your teeth when you put food in your mouth? You crush it down. You crush. Yeah. All right. Let's put the word crush because it it's, it sounds good. Crush, consume, all right? The, the letter Yud, the symbol for, guys, let me tell you something. This is when Hebrew, this is before Jesus came. This is before, this is pure Hebrew. This is not a Christian point of view on this. This is just pure Hebrew. The Yud, which is a hand, the symbol of the hand stands for work or deed, okay? Work. Can you guys see it? Yeah. yeah. And the Tav, the symbol is what, guys? Cross. Cross. Oh, I'm right. Crush. Like an X or a cross. A, a X is a cross. <clears throat> guys, <laughs> this is so beautiful. Because in the first letter of the first word of the Bible, the letters, the what the the symbolic meaning of these letters are saying that in the beginning, Bereshit, which means in the beginning, the Son of God was crushed by the work of the cross. Oh, wow. Wow. Hallelujah! I'm telling you guys this why because God said. I show the end in the beginning. God reveals himself. He reveals the end. This is a major spoiler right here, right? So you see when John says he he was he was he sacrificed himself in eternity before everything was created, the lamb of God he gave himself up to death. In the beginning Jesus already had chosen to give his life for every one of us. Before even knowing anyone, any, like all of us, he chose to give his life. Because in the beginning, the Son of God, he was crushed by the work of the cross. Amen, guys? Amen. 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 So, <clears throat> saying this, the lamb, he rose up to break the seals. He was the only one worthy to break the seals. All right? Go to chapter 6, please. Um, somebody read verses 1 and 2, then somebody else read the verses, verses 3 and 4, somebody else read verses 5 and 6, and then verses, and then somebody else read verses 7, 8, 7 and 8, so two was, verses each, all right? Okay, anybody want to start? Verses 5 and 6. Somebody else, please. Oh, okay. 
And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And I see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Amen. And verses 7 and 8. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on, on, on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and the power was given to them over the fourth of over the fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast. All right, guys, look, this, what God has shown me, what the vision that John is having is things that are happening slash going to happen. Um, there is different theological views on, on when it takes place, all right, because um, you see this type of language um during tribulation time, and and um, what I want to get into right now is that these are things that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. We see these things already happening today at a certain level. We've seen it happening in the past, like over and over again, because... Um, Prophetic visions that God gave to the people, like to, to his prophets, are very cyclical. I'll repeat, it's, they're very cyclical. So you see like... What is the word cyclical? Mean? Cyclical means that it happens over and over again. It's like on a cycle. It repeats, right? So, so they look at it as cycles. So that, that's how the book of Revelation is kind of written because it, it, it goes through one cycle and then it explains it again and it explains it again. But you see this type, the same type of language in what God already told people all the way back in the beginning, like I said before. All right? I just want to show you this because um, this, the, this type of prophecy, God already showed the people, and people already suffered through this. Okay? But it's something that is also going to happen. All right? I know this is where people start getting freaked out because of all those scary things and death and hunger and you know war and and diseases and all of that i know people get scared about that and that's what what god like before we we started this god started speaking to me but it's things that will happen okay let's just let's go to the book of leviticus real quick i just want to show you guys leviticus 26 that is in the beginning of your bible Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, the third book of the Bible. And chapter 26, verses 14 through 34. Guys, remember what you got while you're opening. Remember what we just read about these four horsemen. We are talking about the four horsemen, okay? You see this type of language in movies till this day, right? The four horsemen of, you see memes on the internet about, you know, the four horsemen of, yeah? Yes, sir. <laughs> so, you see, he's very smart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, so, on last Sunday service, I was, uh, I was going, I was giving him, like, I was going to minister to the kids, and it was me and him, right? So, I was going to teach him about the story of Jesus in, in, in the, the well over there, and the pool in Beth Bethesda. He knew the story already. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to teach him something new, but he's like, oh, yeah. he, he knew, like, the whole story, the message of the story. As a you know? like, all right, let's, let's do it in Greek. Kind of threw a curveball. <laughs> but, okay, so, guys. Um, but if you, okay, yes, yes. But he, if you will not listen to me and carry out all these commands, 
And if you reject, reject my decrees and abhor my laws and fail to carry out all my commands and so violate my covenant, then I will do this to you. I will bring on you sudden terror, wasting diseases, and fever that will destroy you, your sight, and sap your strength. Real quick, Pastor. I want you guys just to be aware that it's talking about, it's, the, it's similar to what Jesus is showing John, okay? Yeah. It's the same type of prophetic language. Please continue. You will plant seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you so, so that you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will flee even when no one is pursuing you. Uh, I'll continue. <clears throat> I'm going to read. I know you guys open. I'm going to read it real quick just so we can listen to. To, to the language, all right? Because I'm not going to get into all these, these details. I'm just showing you, all right? Um, if after all of this you will not listen to me, I will punish you for your sins seven times over. There you see another type of symbolism, right? I will break down your stubborn pride and make the sky above you like iron and the ground beneath you like bronze. Your strength will be spent in vain because your soil will not yield its crops, nor will the trees of your land yield their fruit. I will remain hostile toward, if you remain hostile toward me and refuse to listen to me, I will multiply your afflictions seven times over as your sins deserve. I will send wild animals against you and they will rob you. You see that one of the horse, horsemen, they, yeah. they get the part to let out beasts to kill you, right? Destroy your cattle and your children and make you so few in number that your roads will be deserted. If in spite of these things you do not accept my correction but continue to be hostile toward me, I myself will be hostile toward you and will afflict you for your sins seven times over. And I will bring the sword on you to avenge the breaking of the covenant. When you withdraw into your cities, I will send a plague among you and you will be given into the enemy's hands. When I cut off your supply of bread, ten women will be able to bake your bread in one oven and they will, they will dole out the bread by weight. You will eat, but you will not be satisfied. In spite of this, you will not, if you, in spite of this, you still do not listen to me, but continue to be hostile toward me. Then in my anger, I will be hostile toward you and my, I myself will punish you for your sins seven times over, but you will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places and cut down your incense altars and pile, you, and pile your dead bodies on the lifeless forms of your idols, and I will abhor you. I will turn your cities into ruins and lay waste your, lay waste your sanctuaries. I will take no delight in, pleasing, in the pleasing aroma of your offerings. I myself lay waste the land so that your enemies who live there will be appalled. I will scatter you among the nations and I will draw out my sword and pursue you. Your land will be a land laid waste and your cities will lie in ruin. All right. I, I, I think you guys see the picture. You get the picture. It's the, it's the, it's, you see the similarity in the language of the type of, of punishment that God brings upon the people. All right? I know that this prophecy, it fulfilled in the prophets in, in Jeremiah's time, okay? Because God was speaking about this. We see it fulfilling when the Jews, they were taken, they were taken, exiled, captivated to Babylon, all right? To Babylon. So, um, but we see here repetition. <coughs> oh, water, <wow>, please. <laughs> We see here repetition in the core elements. The core elements. DJ, what are the four horsemen again? So famine, plague, um, war, and death. Famine, plague, war, and death. We see these elements, these core elements here. All right, guys? Guys, I just want to tell you guys something. That's what God is moving me today to speak. I, I was preparing some, I was preparing this study to try to go through this chapter and I, uh, I want to like hurry up so we can <laughs> finish so it doesn't get so late. But I know that we tend to think that destruction comes from the devil, right? Mm -hmm. But God can do it too, okay? I know we tend to think that 
the devil is a great baddie, can like people fear the devil, okay? But God, he can he brings destruction too. But before he brings this destruction, you know what he does? He warns people about it. He tells why. Why do you think that God warns people about destruction? Repentance. So they can repent. So they can repent. Because of his love. But God, he brings destruction. Did you see the language here? What God was saying, I will do this to you guys. This is God speaking. You'll never forget. I will do this to you guys. I'm going to read a quick verse here in Ezekiel chapter 14. The book of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 12 through 19. We're kind of running low on time, so I'm just going to read if you guys want to listen. It says, the word of the Lord came to me. Look at this is God speaking to, to Ezekiel, right? Son of man, if a country sins against me by being unfaithful, and I, this is God saying, and I stretch out my hand against it to cut off its food supply and send famine upon it and kill its people and their animals. Even if these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, that were considered the most just men in the world, they were just, okay? Noah, Daniel, and Job, even if these three men were in that city, they could only save themselves by their righteousness, declares the sovereign God. The servant Lord. Or if I send wild beasts through that country and they leave it childless and it becomes desolate so that no one can pass through it because of the beasts, as surely as I live, declares the servant Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons and daughters. They alone would be saved. Somebody help me, bro. No? They alone would be saved, but the land would be desolate. Or if I bring sword against that country and say, let that, let that sword pass through the land and kill its people and their animals. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if these three men were in it, they could not save their own sons and daughter. They alone would be saved. Or if I send a plague in that land and pour out my wrath on it through bloodshed, killing its people and their animals. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could, they could save neither their son or daughter. They would only save themselves for their, by their righteousness. Guys, let me tell you something. God sends it. And this is what I want to show you. I want to tell you guys. Um, because on the chapter five, on chapter five of the book of Revelation, and this is what I want to bring to you guys tonight, wrapping this up. Let me ask you guys something. You guys see, I'm, th this is only two verses that I, I'm showing you guys that speaks about the four core elements of, of John's vision, okay? The four core elements. God says, I'm going to bring plague, death, war, famine, okay? God speaks on this, saying that he will bring it. Let me ask you guys something. Who was the one that had the scroll in his hand? Jesus. The Father. The Father. I'll ask you guys again. I want you guys to think on that. Who had the scroll? The Father. The Father. God. Who wrote that scroll? God. Guys, listen to me. Who had that scroll? God. God handed it to who? To the Son. Guys, God is in control of everything. Of everything. He's in control of everything. Why am I saying this to you guys? You, we, these four horsemen, we see them throughout the Bible. We see them in the book of Zechariah. 
Zechariah chapter 6, I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read it. The same horses, but in different order, okay? Sent out to do the same exact things. The same exact things, okay? But sent by God, they all came from the Lord. Zechariah, he has part of the vision that John completes it, okay? Like I told you guys, uh, um, these prophetic visions, they are progressive. They grow. The book of Revelation, it grows. It dives deeper and deeper, you know, by each chapter. You get a deeper understanding. But this is a completion of visions that the Lord had already given. So, Zechariah, he says, these four horsemen that came from the Lord, I, the Lord God, I sent these on the earth. Let me tell you something. It's not the devil that is sending them. It is God. Why am I telling you guys this? Because even though that we here, we believe that um, during that the, the, the church won't be here on earth during tribulation. Christians are afraid of it. Because like Pastor Renan said, we could be wrong. We got to be, we got to hope for the best. Be prepared for the worst. Yep. We got to be prepared to live through all of this. Mm -hmm. Okay? You guys want to understand about these plagues? Just read the book of Exodus. It's the same thing that happened in Egypt, guys. The same thing that happened in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay? But the Bible says... If you read chapter 8, chapter 9, when God sends the plagues, it says that. It fell upon the Egyptians, but nobody in Israel, no child of Israel, was touched by the plagues. What I'm trying to tell you guys is this. Do not be afraid. Do not fear this book. Do not fear the destruction that comes, the plagues that comes, God's hand falling upon the earth. Do not fear it. You know why? Because it is in God's control. Amen. It's in God's control. He is the one that is on top of everything. He is the one that's, that is doing everything. It's in his hand. And he gave it to the Son. <clears throat> to the Son. And we know that all of us, all of us are victorious in the Son of God. The Son of God. What I want to minister to you guys tonight, I want you guys to get out, to leave the place of fear. Leave your place of fear. <clears throat> One of the fathers of the, the Protestant Reform, Martin Luther, he has this very controversial saying, but very strong. He says that the devil is the devil. Of God. He's saying that the devil belongs to God. That the devil, he can only do something if God allows him to do. So the devil, he can only touch your life if God allows it. But God will allow him to touch your life if we disobey. If we are in debt. That's why the devil, you know? So we do not fear the devil. We do, we do not fear the wrath of God, because the wrath of God comes upon those who disobey. Didn't you hear what the prophet says? If you guys choose to disobey. So, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. We're going to go through these profound texts. texts. But you just got to know that God the Father, He was the one that had the scroll. The scroll belongs to Him. And he gave it to the son. Okay? So everything that is going to happen, guys, everything that is going to happen in this book is in God's hands. We do not fear it. We do not fear what the devil has. We do not fear what is out there in the world. Greater is the one that is in us, within us, than the one that is out there in the world. He's greater. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just please.
when we study this book and when you stop to think about it at home. I want to pray with you guys. I want to ask you guys to not be afraid. <clears throat> to find joy in this. Because this is a blessing. If God is saying that he's going to do this, you know, you know why he's telling us? <coughs> so that we can repent. We only, we only are afraid if we are in debt. Right? Mm -hmm. If we owe something. We only fear because probably there's something in our lives that we think, oh, this, you know, uh, I can't get over this. I'm, I'm still sinning in this. So we fear. We fear destruction. We fear. <gasps> but let me tell you guys something. God, he is telling us and telling us and telling us so that we can repent, so that we can trust in him and give our lives completely to him, completely to him. Because in his hand, in his hand, the devil does not touch us. Amen. 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 So I just want to, I want to pray with you guys. Um, close your eyes. I just want to pray with you guys real quick. Because this is what the Lord ministered in, in my heart. Just before we were about to start. Um, for us to just take a stand. <clears throat> And I want you, I'm going to pray with you guys, but if you have ever felt fear, and I'm talking about fear of the devil, fear of the harm that you can suffer, or fear of circumstances, fear of whatever you're going through, I just want to tell you guys that it is all in God's hands. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. And you do not have to be afraid. Amen? Amen. Lord, we want to thank you for being with us today. God, I want to minister this in every one of, every life that is in here today. Lord, your, the, the, your word says that true love, true love makes fear go away. It casts away all fear. Father, we love you. And we have received your love for us. Because we have received the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. And we love you. Lord, I just want to ask you right now that you, shall, that you cast out all fear in our hearts. All fear that we have, every mis miscon misconception that we have had, reading the book of Revelation, closing our hearts, because probably thinking, afraid of what could happen. But Lord, we just want to tell you that we trust you. We want to trust you more and more each day. I want you, Lord, I ask from you that you may lay in our hearts trust more and more every single day so that we can trust in you lord every single day more and more in jesus name i want to cast out all fear of our hearts all fear of our hearts so that we may only have the fear of the lord in jesus name we pray amen <coughs> Questions? Ooh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Guys, <clears throat> my first time speaking, so. <laughs> um, any questions on what we talked it's about? No questions, but yeah. this is the first time I'm happy and excited of reading Revelations. It's not by myself, and I actually have a clarity of understanding. Yeah, because Lily used to see like terrible movies. Like, yes. <laughs> 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 I feel so much clearer 